Hi, and welcome to another episode of Technology in 10, recommended by 9 out of 10 dentists. In this episode, we take a look at the World Wide Web and web browsers. So welcome back. We are going to look at what a web browser is as well as what the World Wide Web is. Most people think that the internet and the World Wide Web, that WWW thing, is the same thing. Well, not completely true out there. The internet is a collection, a humongous collection, a ginormous collection, a colossal collection of networks all connected together. The World Wide Web is but one part, one service that makes up the internet. The internet's made up of a whole bunch of types of different services. While the World Wide Web is the most popular, probably the most well known, it is but one service within the internet. You can almost think of it like this. If you take a look at your computer, you're running some type of operating system, whether it's Microsoft Windows or a Mac operating system, OS X or Linux or whatever, that would be the internet. It's a humongous shell. It's the environment, the world, the galaxy in which applications are going to run. Applications like a word processing program or games or music players. These are applications that run within the environment, the world, of the operating system. The internet is the world, the galaxy, while the World Wide Web is yet one application running in that world, in that universe. Specifically, the World Wide Web is a set of standards on the internet that allows us to publish videos, images, audio files, documents, all linked together known as hyperlinks. If the World Wide Web had a dad, it would have to be Sir Tim Berners-Lee. He released a proposal back in 1989 that would eventually become the World Wide Web. He released the idea and the standards that would eventually become the WWW that we know today. In the 1990s, and actually 1990, Sir Tim Berners-Lee and Dr. Robert Caillou proposed a follow-up paper cementing those standards a little bit more, which would eventually become the World Wide Web. And again, it ran via hypertext. What we're talking about here is resources linked together. This resource is linked to that one, linked to that one, linked to that one, thus creating an entire web that would eventually span the world. The World Wide Web came to be, actually we could say it was born officially, on August 6, 1991. So that's the World Wide Web. It's an application, it's a service in the internet. So what's a web browser? A web browser is a software or application designed to go onto this World Wide Web, request information, read that information, then present that information back to the user in information that that user can understand. Web browsers are usually done, usually used to access the resources on the World Wide Web, the whole WWW thing. But we can use web browsers for other purposes as well. In fact, we can also use web browsers on things called intranets. Intranets are networks that never see the outside day. They never go outside the facility or facilities that they're built for. For example, the military has an intranet that's just internal to them. Many federal agencies have intranets that never go onto the internet. They're internal networks. So how do these browsers work? Typically what happens is the user, you, will put in something into what we call the URL, or Uniform Resource Locator. You might have also heard this called the address bar. The browser then sends a request to the web server that's going to contain the information you are looking for. It provides the computer code, such as like HTML or XML. Your browser then brings back that information in a format that you can understand. The URL can be broken down into different sections. So for example, let's take a look at my own personal website, www.mrfordsclass.net. We can see that several things make up this URL. We begin by taking a look at the HTTP. The HTTP stands for Hypertext Transfer Protocol. It's gonna tell the computer what it needs to do. So for example, if you were to receive an invitation to a party, the party invitation should tell you what type of party it is. Is it a black tie event? Is it casual? 
what kind of party are you going to? So you can dress and act appropriately. The HTTP is a protocol that tells the web browser, hey, you need to act this way to get the information. Then we have the www, of course, this is World Wide Web. And then we have the domain name, the Mr. Ford's class .net would be the domain name. The domain name is like if you have your smartphone and you have your phone numbers put in by people's names. And so you said, call John, call Sam, call Sally, call Jane, call whoever. Your phone then translates that name into a phone number. In the world of the internet, in the world of the World Wide Web, when you put in a name, for example, MrFordsClass.net or YouTube or what have you, it goes and finds what we call an IP address. An IP address is the phone number for the website you're going to. Now, what's up with this .net thing or .com? These have specific things behind them. For example, the .com is a commercial website. Now, these are not always true anymore. This is how it was originally, and things have changed over the years. So this is a by and by at large with exceptions kind of a thing here. The .com typically is for a commercial website. It can be used for personal websites. But the idea behind the .com was this was a commercial website. The .NET is a network. This was originally intended for maybe smaller companies. Then we have the .edu. The .edu is reserved for educational institutions. The .org is typically reserved for nonprofits. The .gov is for U.S. government entities. .mil is for the U.S. military. So with all this talk about web browsers, let's take a look at a few of the really big popular ones. We have Google Chrome. This is actually my go-to favorite right now. Google Chrome will work on both your Apple computer as well as your Windows computer. You can also use this on your tablets and mobile devices. You have Mozilla Firefox. I was a big fan of Firefox. I still have it on my computer. That would be my second choice of web browsers currently. Then we have Internet Explorer. Internet Explorer is the default browser for the Microsoft world. It used to be they had a version for the Apple, not so much anymore. Then we have Opera, which will work on both platforms, either Apple or Microsoft. We have Safari. Safari is Apple's default web browser. And there's also a different one that I was looking around to take a look and see what's out there. And this one's known as Zach Browser. Zach Browser was specifically made for children with autism. Kind of an interesting uh, a, a web browser. And like I said, I'm putting it here. I'm also putting links to all of these web browsers as well as all relevant information. So be sure to check out the description down below for more information. Okay, that's going to call it quits for today. Hope you have a better understanding of what the World Wide Web is, as well as web browsers. If you're only using one web browser, I would suggest downloading some of these other ones and giving them a shot. You'll never know which one you'll like the most. Until next Technology Tuesday, this is Scott Ford signing off. Bye-bye.